In this presentation, I will discuss the modern view of light that is sometimes called the wave-particle duality. It is a view of light that states that light moves through space and interacts with other light sources as a wave, but at times has a particle-like behavior when it interacts energetically with electrons. In the beginning of the 20th century, physicists began to study and develop the equations that could describe the parts of the physical world that were incredibly large, incredibly fast, or incredibly small. For example, during this period, Einstein provided the proof that molecules exist, physicists revealed the structure, composition, and mechanics of the atom, and with the Big Bang Theory, we had the, an explanation for the origin and destiny of the universe, and Einstein explained gravity as the warping of space with his general theory of relativity. The behavior of the extreme parts of the physical world were so radically different from the world of everyday objects that they seem to require a brand new set of equations and models. We call these new set of rules, models, and equations modern physics. What characterizes almost all these new rules is their strangeness. For instance, Einstein's theory of relativity and subsequent experiments tell us that the mass of a body increases and the flow of time decreases as an object approaches the speed of light. It tells us that the energy that an electron can possess is restricted to certain values and that an electron moves through space as a wave. In this presentation, we are going to focus on the nature of light. At the end of the 19th century, an experiment called the photoelectric effect caused scientists to rethink the wave model of light. In this experiment, a metal exposed to UV light caused the emission of electrons. When the scientists changed the brightness and frequency of the light, he got results that the entire physics community could not explain. In 1905, an unknown 26-year-old physicist named Albert Einstein explained the photoelectric effect by stating that light did in fact behave like a wave, but it also had the ability to act like a particle. Einstein won his only Nobel Prize in physics for this discovery. Whenever the photoelectric experiment was performed, scientists noticed that the metal used would not eject electrons until the source of the electromagnetic radiation was above a certain frequency. This frequency was called the threshold frequency. If your light source was below the threshold frequency, no matter how bright you made the source, no electrons were emitted from the metal. Since the brightness of a light source was long associated with the energy of the light, these observations seemed to contradict everything physicists knew about light. Scientists called the electrons emitted by the photosensitive metal photoelectrons. If the light source was above the threshold frequency for that photosensitive metal, increasing the brightness of the source caused an increase in electron emission, but the electrons never acquired more kinetic energy. Scientists could not explain this observation with the wave theory. The number of photoelectrons emitted in this experiment were always directly proportional to the intensity or brightness of the electromagnetic source used. Doubling the brightness of the source always doubled the photoelectron emission. Scientists had no way of adequately explaining this observation. Brightness, however, had no effect on the energy of the photoelectron emitted. The kinetic energy of the photoelectron emitted depended on only two factors the frequency of the light used, and, and the nature of the photosensitive metal used. Some materials only produce very high energy electrons when the illuminating source had a very high frequency. Metals with a high threshold frequency produce electrons with less energy. These observations seem to contradict scientists' current view and understanding of light. Scientists wondered why the brightness of the light had no effect on the energy of the electrons emitted from the metal. They could not explain why when the light source was below a certain frequency, there was no amount of brightness that could cause the metal to emit electrons. In this animation above, you can see that the calcium does not emit electrons until the light source frequency approaches violet. Einstein explained the photoelectric effect by proposing a view of light that does not completely refute the wave theory, but simply modifies it. Einstein's explanation of the photoelectric effect borrowed heavily from a controversial new theory that explained how electrons in an atom 
absorb and emit energy. This theory was called quantum theory. This theory proposed that the electrons in an atom were restricted in the energies that they could possess, absorb, or emit. The energies that an electron could emit or absorb were always equal to the frequency of the emitted light times a small number called Planck's constant. The energy emitted from an electron did not flow out in a continuous stream like water from a lawn sprinkler, but were released in tiny chunks, or quanta. We now call these chunks of electromagnetic energy photons, or particles of light. In the quantum theory, the energy of the photon is directly proportional to its frequency. The energy of a photon of light is indirectly proportional to its wavelength, so electrons that give off a lot of energy would produce photons with a wavelength towards the gamma radiation side of the spectrum. Einstein explained the photoelectric effect by proposing that when light interacted with the electrons in the photoemissive material, it acted like a particle. Each particle of light or photon was responsible for emitting a single electron, and photons were received individually and could not combine with other photons the way a wave could. Bright light had a lot of photons, and that's why if the frequency was high enough, it could emit a lot more electrons than dim light. High frequency light, as the quantum theorists stated, was high energy light and therefore could eject electrons from the metal with a higher energy. Einstein proposed that the difference between the maximum energy of an ejected electron and the energy of the light source could tell you how much energy, or how much work it took to remove the electron. If a photon or a packet of light energy didn't have enough energy to remove the electron, you would see no emission. If each photon did not have the energy to move, remove an electron, it didn't matter how bright you made the light source, no emission would occur. When you plotted the frequency versus the maximum kinetic energy of the ejected electrons, the plot always started at the threshold frequency of the metal and had a slope equal to Planck's constant. This is a picture of a photograph film developed in very dim light. The film does not develop all at once, but emerges over time as more and more photons hit the photographic plate. In our current view of light, we hold that light does in fact propagate through space as a wave. For instance, light spreads out when it passes through an opening and it interferes constructively and destructively with other light sources. What makes light different from other waves is how it interacts with small objects like electrons. Light is absorbed and emitted by these objects in chunks of energy called quanta. This is the end of my presentation on the particle wave duality.